I'm gonna talk about how we bought an apartment building for $1.3 million and it's gonna be worth close to $5 million about 12 to 16 months later. So this is what I like to call, you know, scaling quickly, right? Compared to single family, you know, you can scale as well as single family, but how long is it gonna take you to buy a property at 1.3 million, or how many properties you gotta buy at 1.3 million and for them to be worth $5 million? Now, we do have to add some rehab, so let's just call it $2.2 million all in, let's say $900,000 worth of rehab, and it's worth $5 million. Okay, so compare your best scenarios in single family where you can buy X amount of single family for all in at 2.2 and it's worth $5 million, right? In a year, 12 months, maybe 16 months, 18 months, maybe you buy multiple, right? How many do you have to buy? How many contracts is that? How many loans is that? How many contractors? How many locations do you or does your team need to drive to to check up on all your pro properties, right? or you buy a 72 unit apartment building and all your driving time is to one location, right? If you had 72 houses, even if they're in the same city, shoot, they could be within a three mile radius. How long is it gonna take you to go drive every single property and check it out, right? Even if you just drive on the outside, right? Maybe you don't even go in. Or you can just drive to a 72 unit apartment building and you can just check it out right away. So scalability, I love it, right? Predictability, I love it. The ease of getting loans, I love it. The cash flow, I love it, right? If 10% is gone, still making money. If it's vacant, 10% vacant, I'm still making money, okay? Still making money at 90% occupancy, okay? So let's talk about this case study. We bought a property a little bit over a year ago or about a year ago in North Carolina, and it's a 72 unit apartment building, okay? We got a stupid deal, like stupid deal. 1.3 million, right? How did we get that deal? You wanna know how we got it? We made a phone call. We talked to the owner, told her, hey, basically are you looking to sell? She said, hey, I get this call all the time, but you guys sound nice, let's continue the conversation. That was it. So there's a tip for you. Just because you call somebody and they're mean to you, they hang up on you, they hurt your feelings, doesn't mean you don't call them back or, you don't, or you're not consistent, right? We just happened to call her at the right time, at the right moment where she was said, hey, you know what? I might wanna sell. And we started the conversation and we bought that for $1.3 million, okay? So let's go ahead, 72 units, we're gonna spend about $900,000 in rehab, right? When we got this building, the average rents were around, so about $495. I wanna say it was $495 to $550, okay? Those were the average rents, okay? On our pro forma, which basically means what we think the rents are gonna be once we remodel or once we should come in and we fix up a little bit or we raised the rents, we had it at 725. That's how much we thought we were gonna rent them out for. And actually, right now, we are renting them out for 825, okay, on average. So you always have to be super conservative when you do underwriting so you don't get, you don't get bit in the ass, right? You don't lose your shirt, you don't get caught with your pants down, okay? Don't wanna lose your shirt, number one. You gotta, you make your money when you buy. You make your money when you buy. So we got a stupid deal, 900K rehab. That brings us at $2.2 million all in, okay? So what does it look like? Tell you what, we had to bring in about 25% of the down payment. So what's 25% of 1.3? Yeah, it's about 300 to 325K, okay? That was a down payment, all right. So we came in, started rehabbing some of these properties, some of these units, and now we're getting $825 each, okay? So let me fast forward to a year later, okay? 
So if we take A25, times 72 units, let's do the math. What is the math, right? Let's check it out. A25 times 72, that's $59,400 per month, okay? Times 12, that's $712,800. Now, that's your gross rents, okay? Out of here, you have to subtract expenses and you know vacancy, things like that. So let's just say that area, the vacancy for that area, let's just say it's 8%, which is pretty high, okay? That's really high, but what you're gonna say is 8%. So we gotta subtract minus 8% of that, of that. That gives us 655,776, okay? Out of that, Let's just assume that is 50% expenses. Actually, we're around 42% expenses, but let's just, let's do 45% expenses because this is actual, this is actual good real numbers, right? We're more like 40% expense ratio, but we're going to say 45% expense ratio. So that's minus 45%, actually. It's minus 45%. So what does that give you? All right, let's, let's do some math. That gives you $360,676. That is what is the NOI. That's the net operating income, okay? That's your NOI. For this area, this is seven cap rate, right? Our cap rate, let me, let me start erasing some of this, but our cap rate is 7%, okay? So... Let's go. We got 360, 676, divided by your cap rate, which is 7%. That's going to give you our value of our building. Let's try that out. Okay. Divided by 7%, bam. What's the value? 5,152,000. 525. That's how much this building is worth today, $5.1 million. Okay. All right. What's the strategy here, right? Do you, do you just stop and you, and you sell it? Sure. You can sell it. You make yourself some money, you know, two or three million bucks. Not bad. But this is a lot of work. It's a long process to find a good asset, find it at a good price, come in, remodel all the units, Get all the bad tenants out, put better tenants in, just make it a better property. It takes a year, two years, three years. So you want to just sell it and redo it all over again? Well, I want long-term wealth, right? I don't want to be flipping apartment buildings. Yeah, I'll flip a few apartment buildings, no problem. I will flip some. But ideally, I want to keep them, okay? Because I want some cash flow. I want some legacy wealth. So that's what th this one falls in that category, right? So let's just say... It was 5.1, right? What was that number? 5.1, or you, let's do, how about this? How about we use the real number that we have? All right, let's use the real number. 152,525, right? Minus, well, before I do that, once it's, that's what it, now that it's worth $1.1 million, this is what we're going to do. Okay, we're actually going to go to the bank and we're going to go, Mr. Bank, Mr. Banker, what kind of loan can you give us on this? What kind of LTV, right? Loan to value, right? For this area, he's probably going to say, we'll give you as much as 75%. Let's assume that he's only going to give us 70% of whatever the current price is. So let's assume he's going to give us a loan, a 70% loan to value, that means he's going to give us you know, 5.1 million times 70%. The bank is going to loan us 3,600,768. That's how much the bank is going to loan us. Now, remember we were all in. What's our all in price? Minus $2,200,000. What's 
What's left over right there? What is left over? Huh? Let's see. Minus 2.2. There's 1,400,006,768. So we're going to refinance out. And when we close on this property, minus some expenses, some closing fees, whatever, right? I'm appraisal fees, but we're going to get a check from the bank for $1.4 million, and we're still keeping the property. We're not even going to sell this property. We're going to keep it, okay? This thing will still cash flow. It's still going to make us $15,000, $17,000, $18,000 a month after all expenses, right? We still got that money coming in every single month, and we got $1.4 million from the bank. You know what the best part about this is? It's tax-free. This is tax-free. Just take a second and try to figure out why this is tax-free. All right, second's over. Cool. Tax-free, why? Because this is a loan, right? It's not income. It's not earned income. It's a loan. They're giving us a loan. Just imagine you have a house and your house is worth a million dollars. And you don't owe, say you own, say you owe half a million to Bank of America, right? And it's worth a million. And here comes Wells Fargo and Wells Fargo says, hey, I'm going to give you $700,000 for your house. So the bank gives you $700,000, you know, as a loan, as a HELOC, like a home equity line of credit or as a, some kind of loan on your house, you pay off Bank of America, the 500K, you have 200K left over. You don't report that in your taxes as income. It's a loan, okay? It's a loan from the bank. So this is tax-free. You can go to Vegas, go gamble, do whatever the heck you want. Go buy yourself a, a house, go buy yourself, go on a nice vacation or, or, you go buy some more property. Now you have 1.4 million that you can use for a down payment on another property. You can go buy a $5 million property. That's why I love apartment buildings because you can scale. You can take one deal, you gotta get a really good deal and cash out like this and use this money to go buy something else, put it in your pocket, go do another deal, raise some money, whatever it is that your strategy is gonna be. If you want to learn more about how we do this, just make sure you follow my other uh, social media accounts. Make sure you look at my other YouTube videos. But I do this all the time. This is what I do full time. So, tax-free money right here. Tax-free money, we're also going to cash flow every single month on this particular property. This is how I want to buy commercial property, apartment buildings, anything in the future. This is, for me, the best way of doing real estate, in my opinion. So, you don't lose your shirt, you get a great deal, great terms, the numbers look amazing, and I love tax-free money. So, till next time.